My name is uh, Dr. Rahul Potlori. I'm the founder of the ACOM study unit from uh, Birmingham, United Kingdom. Um, I have come here uh, to give a talk at the International Academy of uh, Cardiology annual scientific conference held in Vancouver. Um, my, the topic of my talk is big data in cardiology, where we should be going and why. And uh, just to summarize my talk, big data and the concepts of big data have been uh, talked about for many years, uh, particularly uh, in the field of uh, finance and consumer, uh, uh, consumer goods. But in medical and healthcare research, it's uh, relatively new. Uh, over the last couple of years, people have been talking about the concepts of big data and how it can be relating to medical and healthcare research, and particularly cardiology. Um, I think the time is now ripe for big data to be uh, uh, used for cardiovascular medicine and cardiovascular medical research. And I'll tell you a little bit about why I feel that is. Big data as a concept is all around us. And uh, a, a typical example of this is when I uh, was about to come to Vancouver and I uh, Googled the conference and the time for, uh, of my talk, and then I looked up seeing if there was any previous talks on the subject. And of course, my previous, one of my previous talks at the ESC came up, but alongside in the corner, uh, an advertisement came up uh, giving me Air Canada deals to come to Vancouver. So that was actually the big data working in real time where uh, Google had picked up that I was going to Vancouver and was giving me already flight options. So that's big data use in real time, and that's something we should aspire for from a healthcare and cardiovascular medicine and research point of view. Now, in cardiology and cardiovascular research, we've been relatively slow to adapt such an approach. Uh, the main reason for that is that we are uh, clinicians mainly with a bit of research interest and we, thinking outside the box as is required to amalgamate big data into medical research and mainstream cardiovascular research is difficult. Um, there is a significant amount of data out there that we can use to, um, particularly in cardiovascular medicine. And uh, some of you may say, what is the point? We already have large data sets already in cardiology. Well, the large data sets that we have are data sets that have been collected. And yes, there are data sets that are ranging from tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of patients. Big data data sets, um, which have been amalgamated rather than collected, have the potential to have hundreds of thousands and millions of patients, particularly in the Western world where such data has been routinely collected over the last decade. Now, if you, trans, uh, you, know, if you extrapolate such evidence to the developing world, we can uh, create data sets that range into billions, although that will acknowledgedly take some time. Uh, this is where uh, I believe our group was one of the first to delve into it. Uh, I said I'm the founder of the ACOM study unit, and uh, we set up this big data approach to look at medical research almost nine to ten years ago now. And we have shown a number of uh, breakthrough studies, particularly looking at the role of high cholesterol in uh, breast cancer and then looking at the four main cancers in the UK. We have shown that high cholesterol and potentially statin therapy having a protective effect against the uh, development of uh, breast cancer and also subsequently improving mortality in such patients. We have further breakthrough work coming out at the European Society of Cardiology Conference this year in Barcelona, uh, so that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, other research that we have done is to look at uh, the effect of um, demographic variation, particularly marital status and the, its impact on mortality post cardiovascular disease. We have shown that in patients with acute coronary syndrome, uh, a marital status of being married has a 10% improvement of mortality uh, compared to those who are single or divorced, um, long-term mortality after their heart attack event. Now, um, this is, we think this is probably a proxy of uh, psychosocial support networks and risk factors that uh, a stable relationship offers. Now, we looked at other clinical research, uh, looking at the role of uh, percutaneous coronary intervention in patients who had had previous coronary artery bypass grafting, 
and we have shown the, uh, the significant role for PCI in these patients, and we have also shown the role of uh, PCI in patients aged 80 and over who have an acute coronary syndrome. Our most recent work looking at clinical parameters has shown uh, that patients with atrial fibrillation and heart failure concomitantly uh, have a higher risk of mortality compared to either disease alone, and this has been recently published. Uh, at the European Society of Cardiology Conference coming up, we have further work looking at uh, chronic total occlusions, uh, where it's the first time, as far as I know, that big data has been looked at to, in such a large scale, looking at the predictors of chronic total occlusions. Uh, at the American College of Cardiology Conference in March this year, uh, we used a big data approach to uh, look at uh, spontaneous coronary artery dissection, and it was one of the largest studies ever done on that subject. Uh, so, you know, ACOM has taken a leading role in uh, big data research over the last nine to ten years, and we hope to continue this in future. Now, in terms of big data research in cardiology, this is just the beginning, and it is only the beginning because, um, as I said, the data is accumulating and accumulating at a very rapid pace. We now have novel technologies that can make sense of such large amounts of data, analyze them, and come to quick conclusions in very quick time. I gave you an example of uh, how Google used the data earlier on in real time. Using such technology, we can use the same for a patient and uh, medical research benefit in future. There will be some challenges along the way. The accuracy of the data is, a, is an issue, but increasingly we're finding that um, the accuracy of such data is increasing. Um, to around 85 to 90 percent at this moment. It is never going to be 100 percent, but if we look at the numbers of patients we have in such research, uh, where we're talking about potentially millions of patients compared to other studies where there are a few thousands of patients, the power of the studies are going to be significantly larger than the, uh, uh, th than the uh, issues with data quality. Now, where do we go in terms of further technology? Well, I think we need to invite people from the technological world, um, and particularly Silicon Valley, to share our enthusiasm for our medical and cardiovascular research and to improve patient uh, benefit, use some of the technologies that they have already been using for uh, commercial benefit, and utilize that in healthcare for patient and uh, medical research benefit. Particularly, I'm talking about the use of machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence to utilize real big data in real life. As the patient walks through the door in the hospital, we can use their previous data to be able to predict their future and uh, their future outcomes and what would be the best management strategies for them. Um, I'm not only talking about clinical decision-making aids, but perhaps prognostic aids and in future um, helping uh, specific personalized medicine uh, management strategies. Now, a long way away, but I think we are closer than we have ever been, and particularly over the last two to three years, we have been making increasing strides. Uh, overall, my message is, particularly in cardiology, uh, big data research has a great potential, and I'm sure over the next five to ten years, we'll see a paradigm shift because of big data research.